Hi, my name is Ken Oliver. Thank you so much for joining us on this 24-hour event of free art classes around the clock. I am so happy that you're here and thank you so much. And I'm happy that Tracy and Donna were able to organize this. Um, I'm just beyond thrilled that um, I was asked to participate. And we're uh, coming to you from my virtual classroom today. I'm based in Southern Indiana and I live on the Ohio River. It's a really pretty spot. Um, it's a really pretty part of the country. So uh, welcome to my virtual classroom. And um, we're all, you know, making sure that we do our part right now with our Lysol and our sanitizer. Make sure that you're practicing those habits religiously because it's very important to uh, maintain your health, to, uh, to sanitize and keep everything really clean and make sure that you're staying safe and staying indoors. And luckily, we can have this virtual space where we can have a class together. Now, everybody's saying lately that there's social distancing, and I'm not social distancing at all. I'm physical distancing because I'm doing more uh, live events on my Facebook page at Caliber Crafts and doing more FaceTimes and doing more videos. So I'm not social distancing at all. In fact, I'm trying to be more social by doing things like this. I'm calling it physical distancing. So really, uh, we're gonna be social here today. We're gonna create some art and uh, we're just gonna have a good time. Uh, my project today is going to be an art journal spread or art journal layout. And um, right now, self-care is more important than ever making sure to take time for yourself to really like kind of process everything that's going on and really just, you know, like just have some quiet time with yourself just to really get your head together. And what we're doing today is art journaling. There's no right, there's no wrong. Um, I'm going to do a spread that uses uh, a lot of really fun, innovative products. I'll kind of do a, a rundown of them right now, but I will have a, a class list or a supply list um, in the uh, unit section of this uh, of the Facebook page that you'll have access to. Uh, first thing I'm going to use, Color Burst. Amazing watercolor powders. You get brilliant colors with just a little tap and a little spritz. Amazing stuff. If you haven't used it before, you're going to want to try it. I'm using inks from Ken Oliver Crafts. I'm using three colors. I'm using Alizarin Crimson, Tangerine, and Gamboge. Brilliant colors. I'm using stencils from the Crafters Workshop I'm using three stencils and I'll have um, links and item numbers, descriptions to these. Uh, Plumeria, um, here's a beautiful one with insects and also then ethereal. I'm using uh, those from the Crafters Workshop. I'm using mediums from the Crafters Workshop. I'm using tacky when dry gel medium. I'm using black modeling paste and also gloss gel medium for an adhesive at the end. I'm using a uh, white gesso from the Crafters Workshop. I'm using stencil brushes, and you can use whatever stencil brushes you have on hand. I'm also gonna be using a palette knife, a bone folder, and I used um, an old Sam's card to spread my gesso. I'll be using a spritz bottle, and a heat tool and an art journal. So those are basically the, uh, the oh, and gold foil. This journal layout actually has some foiling in it. And I think that you're gonna love the result of the foiling that I do um, on the layout. So uh, basically that's what I've got uh, as far as supplies. And again, the, the supply list and the product list will be in the uh, unit of the uh, Facebook page. So you'll have access to that. And uh, those products are available at KenOliverCrafts.com and also at uh, the Crafters Workshop TCW Shopify um, online. So you can find access to those products online. So without further ado, let's get started. This is an art journaling project, so you can work in whatever art journal that you have, but I'm gonna be working in a hand sewn journal uh, that we make in a class that I teach where we take watercolor paper and sew it into a journal and then practice techniques uh, in the journal that uh, that we've made in class. And I've got an extra one here that I'll let you kind of see like what we do. 
We do some uh, wet on wet painting. We do some uh, color blending and see how colors blend together with color burst. We do some very kind of cool, colorful techniques with spritzing and resist techniques and stencils and washes. And I like to use these journals. I like to reuse them again after I've done this part of it in class to go back and, and work on, look how colorful that is, to, look, to work on more techniques and to work out if I get a color palette that I really love or something about the way that the, the colors blend on the paper speaks to me. I'd like to go back and use that then as um, a base for another project. So we're working in a hand-sewn journal today and we're gonna be using Color Burst. And if you haven't used Color Burst before, it's awesome. It's watercolor, but it's a powder versus a liquid or a cake, it's a powder. And you can get really super intense colors and techniques with these powders because they're so concentrated. The colors are very, very vibrant. And this is the Bright's assortment. I'm gonna be working with an analogous color palette today that's gonna have orange, yellow, lemon yellow, and alizarin crimson. Those colors are beside each other on the color wheel, so they're always going to be look. They're always going to be beautiful together. They're um, analogous. They actually they're made from one another. If you blend lemon yellow and alizarin crimson, you get orange. So they're always going to be harmonious. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to create a spritz and sprinkle background, and I'm just laying this background down to give my composition a color scheme. This color is actually going to narrate uh, part of the story of my composition. So I'm just gonna give this a nice spritz of water. And then I'm gonna sprinkle down some color burst powder. And I'm not gonna use a lot, but I do wanna like lay down some nice transparent color that is gonna, like I said, narrate the story of my composition. That was some orange, we'll put down some alizarin crimson. Can see how that color burst. I can give it a little more water if I want to see a little more burst action. You can see how that color just, oh, it just explodes into action there. Tapping down a little bit of yellow. This lemon yellow is a very clear yellow and I want this color to be vibrant to absolutely just be electrifying now that I've got that the way I like it I'm going to take a heat tool and dry that so I preserve all those beautiful colors. So this will take just a minute. So now this layer of color is nice and dry and I love the way this looks. You can see it's extremely vibrant and um, I'm ready to put down my next layer because in mixed media we do, we like lots of layers and my next layer is going to be um, white gesso. It's a white matte opaque gesso from the crafters workshop and I want to add this onto my page to vary the way this color looks on the on the on the layout um, this is going to add a almost like a translucent chalky layer that I'm going to be able to add inks onto um, in a while it's going to be one of my other techniques is layering inks on top of this gesso so I'm going to apply the gesso you could use a palette knife or a spreader I'm a going to use kind of a low tech way of adding this gesso just by using um, my Sam's card. <laughs> uh, but uh, you could use a palette knife, 
but I want to work fast. So I'm just going to use a, a, a library card or a Sam's card. I think is what I have. And you want to make sure that you give this a really nice shake because gesso is made with ground marble or limestone or gypsum. It's uh, kind of chalky and it gives you a really nice ground to apply your mediums to. So I've got just it's beautiful. It's uh, it's just so creamy. I'm just going to grab a little bit. And I also, I do not want to put this over the whole composition. I want to like almost like frame my composition in with this because I want the colors to be very brilliant in the center to draw attention to my focal point and then a little lighter on the side. And by applying this on the side, I'm going to have a really nice area to apply inks to before we finish. And it's okay if you have some of those streaky areas. This uh, gesso is thick enough that it's also kind of textural. And I'm going to give this a dry with the heat tool. Now that my gesso is dry, I have a really nice background to start adding my focal point or my, my composition or my subject matter into my journal layout. And for my subject matter or for my focal point, I've actually chosen a stencil from the crafters workshop that um, I'll put something behind this so you can see a little better. Uh, the stencil is called Ethereal. And this is basically the genesis of my project or the idea that got me thinking about the word ethereal because it's transitory and light and delicate and almost too perfect for this world. So I'm gonna take this stencil and I'm gonna apply this stencil so that I have this border along the left-hand side of my composition and the word ethereal and its definition here. And then I'm gonna pick up my stencil and apply these diamond-like designs or these sparkles up in this upper right-hand corner. So to do this, I'm gonna use black modeling paste from the Crafters Workshop and a palette knife. And palette knife is so much fun to use if you've never used one before. Oh my gosh, you need to get yourself one because it is like, it is a dreamy thing to be adding the um, gel medium or modeling paste in this exam in this case or paint with a, a palette knife. And I'm just going to start applying by just applying a thin coat across the top of this. It doesn't have to be super thick. In fact, you want to have like the thinnest coat. So basically when you're doing this, hold your palette knife perpendicular or at a 45 degree angle to your surface and then just lightly scrape across it. Don't press too hard. Really what you want to do is apply through here, but not, and I didn't take my stencil down. So I got off a little bit and that I'm okay with that. The process of doing this is almost like putting uh, icing on a cake when you're doing like the crumb coat on a cake, just a very, very light hand or 
I also tell people maybe like you're like shaving because if you're using a razor, you don't want to like press down super, super hard. You just want to like skim the surface enough that you um, make contact, but you don't have to press really hard to do it. It's just let, letting it glide over. I'm going to just go across it to pick up any excess. And I'm going to lift my stencil. You can see that beautiful design. And I'm going to apply the this part of the stencil up in this corner right here. And this is still wet, so I need to be pretty careful about making sure that I don't mess this area up. These are almost like little stars or little sparkles. And I'm not too concerned if my stencil moves around a little bit during this because this is art journaling. It doesn't have to be perfect. A lot of times the things that I do in my art journal are practice ideas that I will put onto a canvas or another piece somewhere else. And I did get a little bit of a bloop there, but it's okay because I have something that we're going to put over that. It's going to be a dragonfly um, at the end of this, uh, the probably like the finishing part of this composition is going to be a dragonfly with gold foil on it. So I'm going to take just a minute to clean my stencil and I'll be right back. So I took a few minutes to wash my stencil and get that nice and clean because I like to keep those clean as I'm working. And then I also took just a minute or two to use the heat tool to dry this to make this ready for the next layer that I'm going to put on top of here. So uh, I love how this is starting to come together. Uh, the next layer I'm going to put down is going to be a, a layers of ink. And I'll be using a water reactive ink. I'm using um, my color burst inks. And I'm going to use lemon yellow. I'm sorry, gamboge, tangerine, and alizarin crimson. Still the basic color palette. Um, I have a red, an orange, and a um, yellow. And to lay the next layer I'm going to use to put this... Uh, ink on, I'm going to use a stencil from the Crafters Workshop. Uh, it's called Plumeria and it's beautiful. So basically my idea here is to frame in around this background, create a frame of blossoms. So to get started, I'll just lay my stencil down where I want to have like some blossoms. And I'm actually going to work a lot of this, like I'm going to put down lots and lots of layers of ink. So this part will take a while and I'll be using um, stencil brushes to apply the inks. I'm going to make sure that I get those blossoms down into my composition like that. And I'm picking up a lot of ink on my stencil brush. And then I'm just going to go in here and start applying this alizarin crimson ink over the stencil. When you're using a stencil brush like this, the key is to swirl. The bristles are tapered 
And as you swirl, you'll get down inside of all the details and give a really crisp image. The inks are going to appear differently over areas where there's gesso. They'll be more translucent and over the color burst, they will almost blend or be transparent. It's a water reactive ink. Other inks that you have that might work, you could use a distress ink or any of uh, your dye based inks. And it's good to pick up a lot of ink. You can pick up the ink by almost like pouncing on the ink pad and then swirling. Add some tangerine next. And I want to add tangerine into this just to give this some glowy color to make it look like the images are basically glowing. And to really accentuate that glowy effect, I'm going to grab some gamboge. Gamboge is a brilliant golden yellow. Again, the title of this piece is Ethereal, so I want this to look transitory and glowy in nature, almost like it's too beautiful to even exist. When I lift that up, you see that I've got those beautiful layers of alizarin crimson, tangerine, and gamboge ink kind of superimposed over the top of that stencil. And then I'm gonna continue this same technique around the entire background, around the border of this layout. Starting with alizarin crimson. And sorry, my um, camera is gonna shake a little bit there. When you're doing this, it's important to make sure that your layer of modeling paste is thoroughly dry underneath.
pick up some tangerine. Just to give it that really glowy look. Typically, I would keep one brush per color. Um, I accidentally dipped into my tangerine with my Gambo's brush. So you can see then how this is starting to add another layer of dimension and color um, on top of the layers that we've already put down. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of fill in some of this. So, with a brush, I'm not even gonna pick up any ink. I'm just gonna go in and swirl that brush around to even out some of the color here in the background. do the same thing with the gamboge. This gamboge is gonna make it look extremely glowy. Almost like there's light coming from within. to readjust and I'm going to do the same thing on this side of my layout. Just alternating between the colors until I've uh, basically created a border all the way around. So I took just a few minutes to go around and complete the border all the way around my spread, my art journal spread and rotating the stencil to get pieces of the stencil that I wanted to include in my, in my composition. Basically just like went all the way around uh, stenciling kind of like a frame. And what I want to do now is I'm going to go back with some gamboge because it's a very glowy color. And just add more gamboge to this overall composition to really make this seem like it glows from within. See how that yellow just really makes this glow? And you know, this doesn't have to be perfect. What you do in your art journal does not have to be perfect. Right now, this is a time for self-care. We're using art journaling to process feelings, to distract our minds from what's going on. And so be kind to yourself. This really, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I have some places where my stencil didn't turn out exactly like I wanted to, but that's okay. It's just, it's an opportunity to embellish or an opportunity to learn because I learned something out of that. I learned that uh, when I do this in the future that I should probably dry this spread before I go back and try to um, add some more detail in with the same stencil. So see how that makes really, really glowy effect
So here's a fun part. This is something fun that we're going to do. Now that we've layered all of this color, I'm going to use a color removal technique to give this a lot more visual interest. Um, I'm going to spritz this with water. The color burst and the inks are water reactive. The modeling paste is not, so it's fine where it is. But what this is going to do is lift out color and give us a modeled effect. So I'm going to just put drops of water down. And I'm not putting a lot of water, but I am putting some pretty good sized drops. The spritz bottle that I'm using is adjustable. So if I want to add some bigger drops, I can adjust it a little bit and just add some bigger drops by squeezing a little bit slower. And this is going to model the overall background. Actually, it will be lifting out color um, and reveal little spots of white. So let that sit for just about a minute. And then lift out some of that color. And where we're lifting out color, you can see how that where we put water down on top of the gesso looks a little bit different than where it's like on the regular watercolor paper. See how that kind of distressed that and made that look a little bit like it's aged, like it's kind of like coming out of the paper almost. And I've moved away most of the water, but I will go ahead and heat set this because I'm going to go back and put another, another plumeria a two on here. So I'm going to go back with the stencil and add just a little more detail right on top here with some more ink. And I'm not going to match this up. I just want to have another flower or two kind of popping out of the background. And like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect. This is art journaling. And right now, your art journaling should be about self-care. Use art journaling to process your feelings. Use art journaling to distract your brain from what's going on. And just use your art journal as a place of personal expression. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna put a little gamboge on top of that. See how that gives me like another layer of pattern on that background. And I can go back with Sam Gamboge over this and really kind of like make that glow a little bit more. Love how that gesso right here makes this color look a little more translucent in here. It's very, very clear. It's really nice to do that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to outline a lot of this uh, stenciling detail with a white gel pen. And I'm just going to go back to this and just start outlining little details on there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, this is self-expression. And right now, this is self-care. Because we all need something to kind of distract our minds from the troubles of the, of the world. And I can use my gel pen here with outlining these to actually bring back some of the definition and detail where my modeling paste got a little bit messed up. I'm 
I'm gonna do both sides. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do all the words. And I'll move through this pretty quickly. Really, all I wanna do is highlight these words and the details in the background so they're a little more visible. It just brings some more attention to them when you put this light layer of gel pen on them. And the modeling paste is already dimensional, so this almost looks like it has like more light shining on it. And I was thinking you could probably use a, a gold pen if you wanted to also. If you want to use a gold, I happen to like white. And this will take a minute, so I'll just go ahead and pause till I get finished with this. So I've taken the time to go around my entire composition and highlight a lot of the areas that I've put a black modeling paste with a white gel uh, pen. It really just kind of brings that out and redefines or defines any areas that I have. And it also then makes some of these places where I had a little bit of a mess up uh, look like it's a shadow on my, on my design. So um, I'm not concerned about that, that I messed up. Don't be hard on yourself. Art journaling is about self-expression and it's okay. You know, like be be kind to yourself right now. This is about self-care. So I've, I'm going to create a focal point for this spread with another stencil that has a dragonfly on it. And to me, dragonflies are very, they're very ethereal. They have, you might have heard their wings called gossamer wings. I'll kind of put a black background under so you can see that, that dragonfly that we're going to put in here. And if you have ever studied a dragonfly, their wings have colors that are blue and green and silver and gold, just like a lot of really beautiful colors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this stencil onto black cardstock with a medium called tacky when dry. And then I'm going to put a layer of gold foil on it to really make that dragonfly ethereal and make it kind of sparkle out of my layout. So I'm going to move this aside. I've got a piece of black cardstock ready. I'm going to position my stencil on top of here and then using tacky when dry medium, I'm going to apply that through the stencil with a palette knife and this is a great medium to use if you like to foil because you can foil in your journals uh, without using a, um, a heat machine or a laminator or anything like that. It's a cold foil process where uh, we're gonna apply this through the stencil. As this dries, it uh, becomes clear. It's white when you put it on. And when it's thoroughly dry, you apply foil on top of it and then remove it and then it's perfectly foiled. And this will be just like the modeling paste that we put down. I pick up some of my palette knife and then just lightly press it through the stencil. The key to this is use a really light hand to do it. it doesn't take a lot of pressure. This flows very, very smoothly and easily. And you want to let this dry thoroughly before you apply the foil. And I would recommend not using a heat tool to do it because um, I think this is acrylic based. It does have some acrylic in it. And the, uh, the melt temperature of that is pretty low. So when you put a heat tool on it, it actually melts it and bubbles up. 
So let it dry naturally. It's called tacky when dry. Let it dry naturally. I'm gonna lift this up so you can see that beautiful stenciled image. And it will take a little bit of time to dry, depending on where you live or how humid your, your studio is. You know, it might take 30 minutes to dry. It could also take an hour. It kind of just depends on the ambient conditions in your studio. Uh, realizing that it would take a while to dry, I went ahead and did one in advance and I also cut it out. But you can see as that medium dries, it becomes very clear. So I'm gonna grab some foil here and you could use deco foil. I happen to use a Go Press foil. Uh, there are any number of foils out there. Gina K has some beautiful foils. And I'm just gonna cut off a piece of foil as big as my dragonfly. And then to apply the foil, what I do is lay the foil on top. And you can burnish this with your finger, like so. I like to use a foam folder because that way I'll get every little detail. And this gold foil on top of black paper is gonna look really sharp. The thing that's appealing to me about this stencil is that half of the stencil is shown as the gossamer dragonfly wing. And the other half of it, this side of it, looks more like it's a circuit board, as if it's like the, the circuitry or the, the cells behind, like what makes this dragonfly wing look so gossamer. It's almost kind of like wing deconstructed to where you can only see like the workings or the mechanism of it. And I'm going to check to make sure that I've got a good coverage. And I do. There's a couple places right here I want to hit. See what using the bone folder actually lets me really press the foil down really well. So I've got that beautiful foiled image. I think you can see how shiny it is. It is just gorgeous. Now, one of the things that people like about using this cold foil technique is that you have this additional piece here that's got the design in it. And you can put this on a journal also, or you could use your laminator to laminate this and set it onto something else. I'm gonna take a minute here to decide where I wanna put this in my journal. Now see how that becomes the focal point of this? Originally, I thought I'd be placing it here, but I could also place it over on this side. But ultimately, ultimately, I like I like it right here because it's by the definition of ethereal, kind of like leads your eye up to it. And I'm going to apply this with uh, some gel medium. I'm just going to use gel medium as an adhesive. I'm going to turn that over. And I'm going to use a paint palette knife to apply gel medium to the back of this before I adhere it to my uh, journal spread. Just want to apply a thin layer of gel medium. This will work just like an adhesive and it dries clear. Position that right in there, like so. I want to really make sure that I get a good adhesion here. So I'm going to press over it with my bone folder just so that it gets right down and mushes out any bubbles, remove any excess.
beautiful art journal spread or art journal layout that um, is ethereal. Um, the colors are very transparent to um, translucent. And then we have a little bit of foil accent on it. And I really like to use foil in my journal. Um, a lot of people don't, but I like to have just that extra little bit of sparkle in my journal because it's like a little unexpected surprise. After I finished with the last little segment of my class, I realized that I wanted to really bring out the colors a little bit more. So um, after I finished the last segment, I went back with my stencil and some alizarin crimson ink and went around this, basically the, out, the outline or the border of this entire spread to bring out some more of the details of this plumeria stencil, uh, just kind of like all around the exterior of the um, layout or the spread. And so um, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that sometimes the color palettes or the, the color exercises that I've done in my journal kind of narrate or, um, or uh, tell the color story of what I've uh, created. And as I was thinking about it, I really wanna add a little more excitement to this particular layout because I looked at this piece last night whenever I was uh, filming the earlier part of this video and I realized that I really like these uh, accents of, of deep, deep blue and deep, deep violet on this orange background. It's actually a split complementary color palette. And I think what I am gonna do to finish this up is I'm gonna go back in and bring in some really shocking uh, areas of that deep blue and violet to uh, really make this uh, spread jump off of the page. Um, I'm happy with a lot of the uh, the elements in this. I love this foiled uh, dragonfly. Uh, when I go back with some of those blue elements, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some shadows under this dragonfly. I'll bring in some shadows under these elements which will all ultimately take away from the fact that I made a little bit of a mess up with the modeling paste on my uh, stencil. And so by adding those additional uh, areas of color, I'm going to correct some of the things that I, that I did that I messed up on uh, just by going back and adding some of that color. So if you want to follow me on Ken Oliver Crafts on Facebook, I'll probably do a live video sometime next week uh, during the first week of April uh, to add in some of those brilliant blues and some of those violets and add some, it'll actually be more like a shadow, I'll add a shadow in behind these things that will really make them jump right out of your art journal. So thanks very much, I hope you've enjoyed the class. Well, what did you think? I hope you enjoyed my class Really, this is the first time that I've ever done an online class, so thank you so much for uh, your patience uh, in the way that, that, that I put it together. Uh, I hope it was easy to follow and that you enjoyed your time there and you'll be um, inspired to uh, go to your art journal and practice some self-care right now um, and just make some time for yourself to really, really kind of like unwind and um, express yourself creatively. Uh, again, just one more look at the project we made. We made a beautiful art journal layout. I uh, used stencils from the Crafters Workshop along with some mediums and some color burst. I really love the way that's turned out. And uh, like I said in uh, the very last part of the class, uh, this next week, I think it'll be the first week of April, I plan to do a Facebook Live and add in some more details to this. So make sure that you're following me at uh, Ken Oliver Crafts on Facebook and also Ken Oliver Crafts on Instagram for an update to how I actually go back and finish this journal layout uh, with some shadows and some blue, some areas of deep blue rich color. So thank you again so much and I hope you've enjoyed your lessons today and um, have fun as you're scrolling through and spending time with each of the amazing artists who are participating in the event.